All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is January 15th, 2022, and you're in for a big one today. Uh, you guys will probably, well, obviously, you'll know what the title is. I'm sure I'm calling it something like The Workers. Uh, I've been talking about this video for a little while, that it was coming together, or that it, that it was coming, and uh, God willing, I was going to get to it. Well, we got to it. We're here today. And uh, as I was putting it together this afternoon, I thought, oh my goodness, this is going to be like a five-hour video. Obviously, you could see whatever the time is going to end up being. It's not a five-hour video. And that's because I'm not going to go into absolutely every detail. Um, you know, when it comes to, for example, the, the trumpet workers, the 144,000, when when we can get into the detail of the Gospel of John and, and what it reveals, but we've talked about that in the past not too long ago, um, we can go into the book of Genesis and tie the things in together there too. We can we can go into Zechariah a lot. We can go into Hosea. We can go into the book of Acts. And there's so much detail, but it would be <laughs> it would be like a five six hour video. So we're not gonna do that extent of a video. But what we're going to do is is those that have been around for a little while and paying attention to this, you'll you'll understand or will have heard much of what we're talking about today. Um, but those who are who are sensing that the Lord is leading them, that they might be working as uh, seals workers, maybe the Lord brings them back there, trumpet work, whatever the case may be, you're going to understand today these portions of these different worker groups. And there are four groups. And that's because you're, you're going to see how it lays out. It's pretty awesome because, you know, don't forget the, the final group is the uh, millennial rain workers. So we're going to lay out all of these worker groups today. We're going to go show where the understanding is, where the revelation is of them, where it's connected within Scripture, how this speaks to that one compared to that one. And we're going to break this all down. As I was putting this together today, I was at 39... <laughs> 39 tabs right across here. It might be 40, 41 now. Um, so about back then, it was, at that time, it was 39 tabs that I had opened just for this video going from Genesis to Revelation. It's pretty crazy when you think about it. We can do this from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation with a number of books in between just to reveal these key portions of time relating to these workers and when they'll be there, a little bit of, of a portion of time of what they'll be involved with, who else is going to be there with them at that time, and compared to another group that doesn't have anybody with, there with them, who they represent, what their timing is, and what it equals for them at the end, what parts of their rewards are. I mean, it's it's pretty wild. You guys are going to love it. We've, I don't think I've ever done one. I don't think I've ever done a video on workers like this before where I'm going to start from the beginning of the 50 days, you know, a little bit of talking of what we spoke about recently, uh, but we're going to start from the beginning of the 50 days and we're going to go right to the end of trumpets and the beginning of the millennial reign. And in fact, we'll even touch on one piece of scripture that we, that we all know, uh, which directly relates to the end of the millennial reign and what you see coming down, which relates to three out of the four workers and you say well wait where's the fourth worker where's that where's that fourth one that was part of it and you're going to see where they are as well so again we've spoken about many of these things but if you've been trying to really get a hold of it trying to to really grasp these portions of time this is the video you've been waiting for this is the one you're, you're going to see it and understand these groups as you as you've never seen them in one place revealed before in fact Never <laughs> will you have seen this before, uh, what you're going to see. So it's exciting. It's fun. I was I, I was happy to put it together. And um, it's just, it, it's so much fun, guys. I, you know, I've been doing this now for June of 2017 was when it started. Uh, when I did my first video, I'm going to share you something with that a little bit later. Um, in fact, let me show you. June 17th was when I did my first video. Okay. This very, very first video I did right here which was a two-part. One was on the 16th and one was on the 17th of June, 2017. And if you go to uh, 
2017, the 16th and 17th of June. It was the 22nd and 23rd of Savan 2017. Could you imagine? This is the day we're talking about for the escape. The seventh day to the eighth day. And the anniversary is the five years on the Hebrew calendar. The five years Gregorian is right here. The five years Hebrew is right here. And five is grace. I thought that was pretty cool. We'll share some other stuff uh, in between when it comes to the 19th. And, you know, we'll go through some of those things as well. <clears throat> but it's going to be jam-packed. It's going to be filled. And, and, and like I was saying, you know, I've been doing this for full time now for about four years and uh it, it's been awesome i <laughs> to know what we to know what we've been given to to understand it i wouldn't change it for the world and i've said this many times even uh, in conversations with people uh recently and on the phone you know everything that i went through and that my family had to endure with me and everything else i wouldn't change it because if i changed it i'd be afraid that if well first of all i can't change it but if i was able to change it i'd be too afraid that if i changed one little thing my direction would have changed and i wouldn't have been the one chosen to open the books for the end of days you know it's it's awesome i i know there's many of you out there that are like me that are just blown away with the understanding when you see it for yourselves and and that's why i have like 40 tabs open because I'm not, it doesn't matter what I look like. It doesn't matter my face and everything else. What matters is understanding his word, is drawing closer in his word, understanding him better. We got to do these things with love, right? With compassion, with patience, but also with some power and authority that when we understand a thing to be true, we speak it, we, we teach it, we, we help people grow and understand in it. Does everybody want to understand? Does everybody want to grow in it? No, of course not. We know that. But thank goodness for the internet and for the good things of it that we can share things like this with brothers and sisters all over the world who come to see us. And uh, in, in, on, uh, in YouTube land, right? Or at our website uh, as well at ministryrevealed.com. And so... Uh, another thing I want to bring up, it's always one of those things that you're like, eh, you don't really want to bring up. But every once in a while, you know, the last time I really brought it up was like almost a year and a half ago when I went to see my mom. Um, but, you know, support of the ministry, you know, some people think that um, and I maybe I can, it can help clear the air. <clears throat> some people think that maybe because it's like eight thousand, almost eight thousand people worldwide that maybe I don't know, maybe there's like one percent of people that donate or something like that guys it's not even close um and i'm not saying that it's not to bash on anybody the lord always provides but <laughs> on a monthly basis it's about a handful of people that support the ministry every month <laughs> sometimes maybe seven or eight but on a monthly basis like that donate every month that support every month uh it's about four or five people so i'm not saying that to to make anybody have bad feelings or to feel guilt or anything like that i'm just saying it to say that sometimes people think that uh you know people are given money left right and center and it's just not the case um but the lord does provide and and i mention it now not only just for for me and my family you know i i actually look this so this is i it, it's uh, you can hear it in my voice it's terrible but you know you i i had to go wash the car today because it was terrible uh, it's been so nice out and everything's been getting all messed up for Canada winter weather, that is. And I went to go wash the car, but I had to look at my account to see that I could pay for it first. <laughs> so so it's, it, sometimes it gets pretty bad. And I know many of you guys out there know what that's like. But at the same time, I'm not just saying it for us, but I'm saying it for us as a collective because we have brothers and sisters here in the ministry and locally that people that we we help. You know, and there's people that that contact us and can use some support and they, they want to be anonymous and just, you know, they need some help. And so we don't just do it for the ministry. You know, with 200 bucks left, there was 100 that we gave away. So, you know, because I know the Lord always provides. OK, <laughs> I've done this for four years, having given up my business and everything because I knew this is what I was meant to do. And the Lord has provided the whole way through. You know, every once in a while, this chunk comes in and you're like, whoa, 
and then we can get things taken care of and things caught up. So, you know, I know the Lord provides and I'm not going to drag it on, but I just wanted to put that out there because uh, we we don't talk about it often. We don't even rarely talk about it. It's virtually never. So I just wanted to put that out because uh, it's just it's important for us and for others uh, out there right now. And I know it's getting worse and harder for so many. So with that, let's move on and get this going here with the workers. Like I said, it's going to be jam packed. And as we get going as you know, once we're a little bit into it, I'm going to show you another uh, uh, connection to this uh, Luke 21 and, and this stone's throw that's been in conversations lately uh, that we spoke about over here. And uh, that that movie that came out, we're, I'm going to just show you another little thing once we're in there along the way as well, because uh, that timing is is unbelievable. All right. So it's all part of the deal. So we're going to show you that in a little bit for anybody that's new in the ministry. I've always got to let you guys know. So when it, in fact, when it comes to supporting the ministry, you can come right here to the GoFundMe. You can go to our PayPal account right here. You can go to the ministryrevealed.com website. And on the website, you can either support from there, but on the website, all of our videos are downloadable for free. It's a one-click download. You don't pay for anything in this ministry. You don't have to support to receive anything. It doesn't matter, all right? You'll always get everything for free. And if you need something that we can provide and we can we can make it happen, we will provide whether it's a book, whether it's USBs with videos on it, papers, uh, the downloads, whatever it is, We'll provide that for you as well at no charge. So, um, but you can go to the website at ministryrevealed.com as well to download those things for free, uh, get the charts, the graphs, all of those things. <clears throat> and don't forget, you can also go into the description box under these videos and find all the links there as well. PayPal, GoFundMe, um, uh, 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 Amazon, if you wanted to buy our book or even the free PDF link, it's all there in the description box as well. All right. Or over at the website and these links over here. So the reason I say that is because I know there's always new people as well. And with a title like workers, there's a lot of people that believe the Lord is speaking to them, that, that they're being led in understanding some know for a fact. And a video like this will We'll prepare them mentally. We'll give them time frames. We'll we'll help them in these things because <laughs> these these workers, man. I'll tell you what. There's going to be some serious things that they're going to see, but they will be empowered like it's nobody's business. All right. So uh, as we normally do when we get started here, when we go into um, breaking it down for, let me just stop this for. We always like to go to the intro videos. Okay, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it today because it's going to be a big video. But this is the playlist that's called the Revealed End Time Study Note Series. These two videos right here are the keys of the revelation of the end times. They're the revelation of the open books, of the gospels. This first one is the intro to who the gospels are speaking to. And these are also the first two chapters in the Ministry Revealed book. Okay. I would recommend watching these two intro videos and then reading the first two chapters of the book. It will blow you away. You're going to understand for the first time in your life in this first part who the Gospels are speaking to. You're going to understand and see that Matthew, Mark, and Luke in the Synoptic Gospels, in the end of days, it's Luke, Mark, and Matthew. We've been taught all of our lives. You'll find that out in the third video. That all of our lives have been taught from Matthew. So when you're taught all your life from the Gospel of Matthew, and you you add Mark a little bit, and you add Luke even less, and you know, and you just add them in once in a while, you're doing it just to kind of fill in spots. But the purpose of them being separate is because in the end of days they're revealing who they're speaking to, and Luke is speaking to the Bride of Christ. Mark is speaking to the sleeping church that will go through seals. And you're going to find out that seals is a set of seven years. And then Matthew, which is Judah, they're going to be going through trumpets. They're going to be removed from the land during the first seven years of seals. That's right. They're going to be removed from Jerusalem for seven years from a, a small war. And then they're going to be fleeing. Then 
it'll be the seven years of Jacob's trouble. It's the seven years for Judah. And you'll understand this, that who it's written to in Luke, Mark, and Matthew, you'll begin to understand how powerful it is in this first intro video. In the second one is where you're going to see that because we've only understood seven years, the reason we've only understood seven years is because of being taught from Matthew all our lives. And that's why people argue, you know, is it pre-trib? Is it mid-trib? Is it post-trib? Well, you find out here in this ministry down at the sixth video that all three of them are true. Because you realize that Luke is the pre-trib escape of the bride. In the seventh year of seals is the rapture of the great multitude, of the sleeping church, of the, the greatest revival that will be taking place during tribulation of seals. And then the seven years of trumpets, and that is when, at the end, in the seventh year, is when the Lord returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives. All these things and more are going to blow you away in this intro series. Okay? You'll see the discourses. Once you understand who the Gospels are speaking to, and you come and watch this discourses video, it, it, I mean, it's just throw everything else out the window. It's so powerful because you're going to understand it the way it's to be understood. And that's why, my coffee sip, that's why I could have like 40 tabs open just for like doing half of this study to show these different groups. Because what was a jumbled up this over that, twisted in with this over here, there, that, is now, whew, it's pulled apart. And you see them in their individual portions of time. And you understand that they're speaking to different groups of people and not just different groups of people that are going to go in the pre-trib escape. I call it the escape. It's called the pre-trib escape. Or um, uh, you could say the one that's called like a rapture. Then you've got the mid-trib rapture of the great multitude. And the third one is when the Lord returns feet down. You see, but within these groups of time, there are also worker groups. And that's what we're talking about today. These different groups of workers. So with that, let's get going with this right away. And what you're going to see is we've been talking a lot about, uh, and we've been talking about this subject for a long time, because the revelation of this ministry is that it's the 14 years of tribulation. It's two sets of seven years. But it begins with 50 days, of which is going to be either the bride going right away pre-trib at the day one of the 50, which would be at the Feast of Weeks, okay? Or the bride goes after seven days at the time of the eighth day, which would be at the year's end, okay? That's called the year's end. We've talked about that recently. That's what this video was about. It was mind-blowing for anybody that hasn't seen this video yet. This should have like 30,000 views, not three, okay? And it should have 300,000. It should have 3 million views is what it should have. I purposely gave it a little bit more time to, to, to creep up with numbers because I want people to have a chance to see it before doing a big video like today. And so um, with this 50, like I said, whether the bride goes at the very beginning or on the eighth day, is still up for debate. And you're going to see that in parts of today's conversation in this beginning portion, because there's two groups of workers that are chosen near the beginning. Okay. Then at the end of seals, after the six years of seals, there's another group of workers and the first two groups are finished. Okay. And then when the trumpet group of workers is done, there's another group of workers. But those workers, they are the millennial rain workers. And when you see it all coming down at the end, when you see it all come together at the end of Revelation, you say, oh my goodness. This is incredible to understand these things, okay? And this is why I'm so passionate. I mean, before doing this, before my first video, you know, on June 16th of 2017, I mean, I didn't realize something was happening until September 8th, 2017. But I mean, prior to that, guys, I barely opened my Bible. And I don't say it's not a brag. It's a humiliation. 
but I watched the Chuck Misslers. I watched some of the big names and, and, and I always had questions within seven years and, you know, how does it fit and how can this be that and that be this? And, you know, but I never looked into it. I just, I just agreed like everybody else did. Now I can go from Genesis to Revelation. I can do it with my eyes closed, give you the word definitions, tell you from this chapter to this. I mean, it's unbelievable. And it's the spirit of the Lord that, that that's leading the whole thing. And the evidence is found in the teachings themselves. That's why those intro series and, and the chapters in the book, at, you know, start with the first two chapters are so important because it's, it's so exciting. I, I've never in a million years dreamed that this is what I was going to be doing with my life. I was an entrepreneur and, and I was an entrepreneur for like 20 something years, you know, almost 25 years. So, <laughs> you know, this, this really came out of left field. But when it started and I knew what I was doing, I knew what I was chosen for. I knew what my job was. I couldn't turn back because it's just been so incredible. And that's why I get really excited and passionate. And I know you guys, it gets you fired up because you can now understand and you're seeing these things better. Oh, it's so exciting. Okay, let me stop because I just, you see, I'm getting myself all excited and I don't need to, I just do. All right. Now, this is why I mentioned this part about the, the beginning portion, because this isn't quite the beginning. Although, like when he comes to this first group, watch this. We all know this one very well. In Luke chapter 12, it says, uh, starting in verse 35, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning and you yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. Interesting, right? Where's the fourth watch? You know, it says the second and the third. Well, the first, of course, is this one here that he says he will sit down Right. He will make them to sit down to meet and he will come forth and serve them. This one is the first watch. This one, then it says the second watch and the third watch. So only the first watch is he going to sit down with and eat. Right. And and serve. We've covered this many times. We know that this group here is, of course, Luke chapter 24. This is all about. The last gospel of Luke, uh, the last chapter of Luke, Mark, and Matthew, and how this resurrection story is a typology of when he comes for the 40 days of the Son of Man, that will be part of the 50 days before the 14 years begin, that the last chapter of Mark is the typology in that resurrection story of him coming at the end of six years of seals. And the Matthew typology in Matthew 28 is when the Lord is returning feet down on the Mount of Olives after the six years of trumpets in that seventh year of trumpets. This is the typology of these three workers. Now you say, well, the same ones as these three. Yes, these three workers. But you'll notice earlier, I said that there were four groups of workers. So there's something missing in here. And I'm going to show you who they are, where they are, and, and how it plays out. <clears throat> this first group right here that he sits down to eat with and to serve are the ones we read about here in Luke. These two that were on the road to Emmaus. And what do we find out about them? It says in uh, Luke 24, verse 30, it says, And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and he vanished. This is the only resurrection story where he sits down to eat with them and serve them. 
this is that first watch group that's not described as first watch, but is described as those he would sit to eat with and serve. Okay. <clears throat> when we read that if I come a second time and they're they're watching, what he's talking about is the great commission that comes in Mark's gospel story at the resurrection. And this group here, it says. He appeared unto them, unto the eleven, he sat at meat, and he unbraided them for their unbelief in their hardened hearts. So this group didn't believe the testimony of the two or the two witnesses. Remember, this is an end time ministry. This is this is the revelation of these books revealing the typology, the types and shadows of who it's speaking to in the end of days. This is that second group that uh, um, when he returns, he said, if I come a second time, this is that second group. So this represents here in Mark, at the end of Mark, is like coming to the end of seals. End of the six years of the tribulation portion. When he, what? When he's going to seal the 144,000. I know it's called the 11. It says unto the 11, and it was related to the apostles. They're all saying that, but we know what the story is. It's a typology because... We've shared on this before. We're going to talk on it again in relation to how the Feast of Weeks is played out. So we know that there's something else going on. We know that he didn't meet just with the 11 and meet with the 11 and meet with the 11 and meet with the 11. It's not the case. We have scripture that proves it. So this group here that we're seeing at the end of Mark, if Luke is the bride being taken and then it's a group of workers, then when you get to the end of Mark's portion of seals, it's like being at the chapter 16. It's the end of seals. It's the end of the sleeping church time. And what do you have? The two from the workers in seals that are now coming to the 144 to tell them that the Lord is coming. And they didn't believe the testimony. So when Jesus shows up, he unbraids on them. And he gives them a reading as to, or he tells them what they're to go and do. So now when we go to Matthew, it's what Luke was talking about in chapter 12 that said, and if I come a third time, when you come, when he comes a third time, who is he talking about? He's talking about this group right here. We have this commission again. Uh, this one's the 11 disciples. And in this great commission, he's not unbraiding on them. He's not upset with them. He's not sitting down to eat with them. They're to go see him at the mountain. And what does he say? He says, all power is given unto him in heaven and on earth. They're to go teach the nations. No more preaching. He's here with them until the end of the world. And that's because this group, being the third group that he was talking about from Luke 12, is the group when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, and they're going to go work the millennial reign. And you're going to see who these three groups are. But are you going to see them in the same order? No, it's not going to be the same order. What you're going to find out is that this first watch group compared to the second watch and third watch, yes, this relates to those in the commission at the end of Luke's gospel. The second one is the commission at the end of the seals Mark gospel. And the third one is the commission at the end of Matthew's gospel for the millennial rain workers, okay? So you've got these guys are going to work seals, these guys are going to work trumpets, and these guys are going to work the millennial rain. But we're still missing somebody. We're still missing somebody. Because what you're going to see is, as we go further on to the end, and something you can remember at the end, is <clears throat> the difference in this first watch group compared to the apostles. You see, during seals, what you find out is that there's two groups of workers. It's kind of like when, it's like a, a replay, if you will, a type of in shadow of a replay of Christ at his resurrection, when he came and it was the, the 50 days total, and he was 40 days of him, but a 50 days total of the Holy Ghost, what happened? You had disciples that followed him, which is the Luke group, right? Luke chapter 24, that they were the ones that followed him for the 40 days. 
but something happened before those 40 days. Okay? According to this, it says when your Lord will return from the wedding. So when we look at something like this, and if you've watched the last video, and we know that this is the Feast of Weeks, this is, this. we're going to talk about this in a bit as well, a little bit more. That if this is the beginning, this is the, the, the end of the 70 weeks of years, and that this is the beginning of the 50 days, then we say, well, are, is the bride being taken here like that says? Because when we read it there in Luke, it would be then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, right? When he returns from the wedding, a one-week wedding, because he's returning, he's coming on the eighth day. When the Son of Man is coming on the eighth day, he's going to then remain for the 40 days. And this group in Luke chapter 24, which is the group that he sat and ate with and broke bread, uh, where are we? And broke bread with, this is the group that follows him for the 40 days and he gives them the commission and, and what they're to do for their commission. So if this is the first group that he meets with and he sits down and eats with, and this is the beginning of the 40 days, then if he said that when he returns from the wedding, to us it would seem then maybe the bride is taken at day one of 50, because he's saying when your Lord returns from the wedding to be ready, and he's talking to the group at the beginning of the 40 days. So in reading that account, it would appear that the bride will go on day one of 50. And we know that there's a typology in this in relation to the story of Jacob. He's happy to work seven years. They flew by. He was so excited. And when the seven years were done, he was expecting Rachel, but he got Leah. And Laban, his father-in-law, said, hey, observe her week, right? Her wedding week. And then I'll give you Rachel as well, for who you will serve me seven more years, which we know is a reference to a seal's portion. And then he works another six years for the cattle, which takes us to the end of the six years of trumpets. So is it possible that this is the wedding week? It is possible. And that's why I was telling you guys at the beginning, the bride is either going here or the bride is going here. Okay. I have a, you guys know where I lean on this. I believe it's the 21st into the 22nd, but it could very well be that 14th into the 15th. All right. So when he's meeting with this first group that he sits and eats and serves, these are the seals workers. These are the, the disciples. You're going to find out these are the ones putting their necks on the line for the Gentiles. But what happened to the other group? We've explained that there was more than one group, right? So where's this other group? Well, look what happens when we go to another piece of scripture that talks about these differences. When we come to 1 Corinthians 15, we see that the story is being told that when Jesus rose the third day, according to the scriptures, it says that he was seen of Caiaphas, then of the 12. Who are these 12? Well, they're not the apostles, because the apostles are down here. These are the 12, as in the 12 tribes, like the heads of the 12 tribes. So this means the, um, the Matthew group. Okay, so again, this group here being Matthew is the ones at the end of Matthew that are going to work the millennial reign. And then it says, after that. So after he met with the 12, he then met with a larger number. And the greater are still to this day. Some are falling asleep. What is this, what is this one representing? This one is a representation of the larger number of workers, which are the 144,000 type and shadow here of those at the end of Mark's uh, uh, gospel. These are the ones that were unbelieving. You know, some of them, they didn't believe them at first. Okay, that's this group. And then you see that it says, again, it says, after that. How is it that there was, he met with the 12, after that, he met with a large number. After that, 
he met with James and then of all the apostles. I don't know about you, but I've been told from what I remembered all my life that it was the 12. We've always been told just 12. Well, there isn't 12. There's 12 and there's 20, another 12. There's 24. And then there's a large number that he also met with. So what this is saying is that at his resurrection, he met with a Mark group first. Uh, sorry, sorry, a Matthew group first. Then he met with the larger number Mark group. And then he met with the apostle group. Well, now, wait a second. How was he meeting with the apostle group? I thought he was meeting with disciples, right? That's what, that's what this is telling us. This first watch that he comes to serve are those at the time of the 40 days, and these are those disciples. So they're not the 144. They're not the, 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 the 12 tribes. So who is or where is this group of apostles? So you see what's happening here. In this description, we have the apostles, but we don't have the disciples. In this description, we have the disciples, but we don't have the apostles. That's part of the mystery. Now, we've known these things. We've never put them together and shown them all together in one video to explain it. But that's what we're seeing. So then if we know <coughs> that the apostles are actually from John's gospel, and when we go to John's gospel and we follow the same storyline at the resurrection, we see that when he comes, he meets with the apostles, right? He comes to the apostles, and when he comes to them, what does he do? Look at, um, he says, peace be unto you, as my father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. He's met with the apostles. So when we follow the storyline from the very beginning of, of the entirety of the end of days, this is the beginning because we're talking about 50 days, then the 14 years, and then the 50th year Jubilee. <clears throat> so, but when we, let me help to clarify this. When we read it here from the resurrection story, what we're reading here is in the in in the in the actual of what happened he met with the matthew group he met with the mark group then he met with the john group then he met with the uh the luke group okay why because what we find out <clears throat> is when we go <coughs> excuse me when we go to the to leviticus Chapter 23, and we read about the Feast of Weeks. The true Feast of Weeks, as we've shared recently, is seven Sabbaths are complete after the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So it is seven Sabbaths, counting true Sabbaths, and then you number 50 days. So from his resurrection, that means there was a seven times seven before a count of 50 days, which goes to Pentecost. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? It sounds really crazy because we haven't been taught the proper understanding. But when we go to, as I just shared, when we come over here to 1 Corinthians 15, he clearly met with Matthew's group first. Then it says after that, he met with this larger group, which is the Mark group. And then after that, he then meets with the John group, and this begins the 50 days. Because it's John's group that begins the 50. Luke's group, which is the, the 40 that starts on the eighth day from the beginning of the 50. <clears throat> excuse me. And then it goes into the book of Acts. We talked about this, I think, in the last video. How is it that it's John, Mark, and then Acts, but 
then where's the story of Mark and Matthew? They're the seven and seven. So this is what I was talking about in the previous video, that what you have is you have a seven week times seven, right? So seven weeks, seven Sabbaths, <clears throat> which brings us to the 15th of Savan, the end of the Feast of Weeks. So you have a seven times seven, then you have 50 days. And when the 50 days are over, it's the seven and the seven of seals and trumpets years. And then it's the 50th Jubilee. So this is that fractal that I was talking about in the previous video as well. So now when we're looking at this and we're reading how, how it says seven weeks or seven Sabbaths and then numbering 50 days, you're now understanding that there's meant to be a separation between the counting of weeks and adding another 50 days, which is the Feast of Weeks. And the other one is the rest of it, which is Pentecost. And when we spoke about this, I showed you in Deuteronomy chapter 16, how when we read about the Feast of Weeks, it says, seven weeks shall thou number unto thee, begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn and thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God and so on and so forth. Do you see anything in here about the next day? There's no uh, the moral after the seven weeks. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say uh, 50 after the seven. It doesn't say that. It just says the seven weeks. The actual portion that's just the Feast of Weeks, the 50 that follows is Pentecost. It's the, it's the 50 portion that is the, where is it? That is the apostles from John's Gospel resurrection story into, Mar, uh, uh, into Luke's Gospel resurrection story that goes then into the book of Acts. Okay? If you need to rewind and, and watch it slower, take the time to do it. This is, this is very important stuff if you want to understand the end of days. So again, what do we see? <laughs> he meets with them. He breathes only on the apostles. He breathes on the apostles so they get the Holy Ghost right away. But then when he does, he leaves and he's gone. And he comes back again on eight days. Well, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? Because he left and he came back eight days later. So from day one, he meets with them, he breathes on them, and then he leaves. And he comes back eight days later. So when we're looking at this in, in Luke chapter 12, let's do it over here. When we see in Luke chapter 12, he says, and you like unto men that wait for the Lord when he will return from the wedding. Well, we can see that the beginning of the 50 days, he breathes on the apostles and he's gone for seven and comes back on the eighth day. He comes back eight days later. When he comes back eight days later, who does he meet with? This group from the first watch. This is the Mark, uh, I keep saying Mark. This is the Luke group, okay? This is that Luke group. These are these disciple workers during seals. But they're chosen and they're following him for the, during the time of him being here for 40 days. Um, uh, uh, but, sorry, they're chosen at the time of the 40 days. You see, they weren't part of the apostles, okay? The apostles already got the Holy Ghost. These guys are waiting for the Holy Ghost at the 50 days. So when we go to Acts chapter 1, we could see that it was these two, right? These two, it was, it was these guys that were following the Lord for 40 days. And then when the Lord was taken up, they were told not many days from now, the Holy Ghost would come. So they go to meet the apostles and the others that were waiting in the upper room and not many days later which is probably like three days later it's pentecost which is the 50th day and this is when they receive the tongues of fire 
the apostles, the apostles already had the Holy Ghost. When the Lord returned on the eighth day and went to the to the apostles again, he saw Thomas and they touched his hand. Then he went on that same day, that eighth day, and met with these disciples who those two disciples that are there are a representation of the two groups, I believe, of 12,000 and 12,000, that'll be 24,000, that are going to work this portion of seals after they're empowered and following him for 40 days and, and, and learning and doing all those things, when they receive the power of the Holy Ghost in the 50 days, their commission is now, they're willing to put their necks on the line and everything else. <clears throat> but their work isn't directly the same as the apostles. So you see why I'm spending a little bit more time in this is because seals has two groups there's the disciple workers which he meets with when he returns from the wedding or when he comes at that eighth day and there's a group of apostles that are at the beginning of the 50 days okay these are the ones he breathed on these are the ones when he comes back on the eighth day to begin his 40 days and when the 40 days are over, they go meet the apostles in this upper room. And they receive the Holy Ghost. And now they're commissioned to go out and to get their work going. All right. Now that'll be the beginning of the 14 years. <clears throat> and their portion of work is the seals portion. So let me let's keep going forward in this now. Acts 1 and Acts 2, we covered that. Leviticus. So who are these Who are these people? What is their work? First of all, we can show exactly who they are in the book of Revelation. And it's so clear, the book of Revelation gives us both groups. But let's start with the first group, okay? Not, not the apostle group, but we're going to start with Smyrna. And if you guys go to the Ministry Revealed website and you download the book or you buy the book, this is from the Ministry Revealed book. Okay? This is the seven stages of church history. So this is Old Testament, thousands of years, two to 2,500, 3,000 years, whatever it was that took place here with the Old Testament portion. And the typology of the New Testament portion, which is 2,000 years, is this row right here, these, these two rows right here. It's the typology of the stages of the seven churches in church history and in the Old Testament. And I've explained many times how the end of days seven churches, this row right here relating to the verses, are going to play out what took thousands of years and thousands of years is going to play out in 14 years. That's how intense and how crazy the times of tribulation will be. So who is this? 40-day worker group. We've talked about these guys many times. They are Smyrna, okay? They are the church, the Roman, the persecution portion. You see, when this persecution begins on Smyrna, it's not even the time when the Antichrist is going after the Christians yet. This is the early persecution beginnings, okay? Period of Israel's wanderings in church in, uh, in Old Testament history. It's the the church of in the roman persecution in the early days of it before constantine showed up okay this is the early persecution of it how can we show this as smyrna being this group first of all this is a great way to show it right here by looking at church history and in old testament but when we go into the church of smyrna we see i know thy works and thy tribulation and thy poverty uh, those that say they are Jews but are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan, fear none of those things which thou shall suffer. Shall suffer. Okay? To intend, be about to be. Okay? Which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and shall, uh, and shall have tribulation 10 days be thou faithful unto death and i will give thee the crown of life 
this tribulation 10 days <clears throat> it's not 10 of the 50 days uh, um at the beginning okay there's something else with this tribulation 10 days it's it's a piece of the mystery we haven't been able to solve yet but there's something at least clear about it that when you are in prison as this group you're not going to be in there suffering for a long time if uh if you're about to be say death row all right those who are putting their necks on the line you're going to see what i'm talking about so what do we see first of all we see some of you the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you shall be tried and so forth some of you will be put to death when we go to luke's discourse luke's discourse is very different than mark's and very different than matthew's for a reason and that's because luke's discourse is only talking about the 40 days you could say the 50 40 50 days of this portion that's before the 14 years begins and we get it right here when luke says then said he unto them nation shall rise against nation kingdom against kingdom this is the red horse rider when the tribulation begins okay when the 14 years portion of tribulation begins it's red horse rider at nation against nation kingdom against kingdom when you go and read luke and uh, mark and matthew's discourse you don't see then he said unto them and you don't see this right here in luke chapter 21 verse 12 it says but before all these meaning before the tribulation begins the the true portion of the 14 years and nation against nation before the time when Jerusalem, Israel is going to be attacked, and then World War III will shortly follow. Before that time, as it says, they shall lay their hands on you, and they shall persecute you, delivering you up into prisons. See, uh, we come down to Luke 21, verse 16. And you shall be betrayed by both parents and brethren and kinfolk and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death but not a hair on your head shall perish. What's this talking about? This is the Smyrna group. This is exactly the same context of the Smyrna group. Smyrna is the group chosen to work seals, but they're chosen at the start of the 40 days. They're gonna follow the Lord for 40 days. When the 40 days are over, yes, they're gonna experience persecution during that time. Even during the 40 days, some of them are gonna be put to death. and why because of the craziness we got to remember tens of millions of people will have vanished there will be chaos probably meteors having crushed onto the earth in some places tsunamis in parts of the world <clears throat> it's going to be chaotic from the start and these guys are going to be going around preaching and the son of man there and the world's not going to believe he's the son of man they're going to think he's the antichrist because nobody's been taught that the son of man is coming for 40 days this group is going to believe them. They're going to be the ones following him. They're going to be the ones preaching in the streets all over the world. And so they're going to be brought in for persecution. Some of them are going to be put to death because of it. They're probably going to th think these guys are causing commotion and chaos, that this isn't what really happened. It was aliens that took them or some crazy thing like that. Because these guys are going to be saying, it was the Lord. It was the time of the end that has now begun. And they're going to want to shut these guys up. This is that persecution. But this persecution doesn't just last for the 40 days. You see, when we see here, <clears throat> this isn't just 40 days. This is the first about two and a half years of seals. That's who these guys are. These are the ones putting their necks on the line. But just because the next church that starts is Pergamum, it doesn't mean the people from Smyrna are gone. They're still working till the end of seals. They're still working till the time of Sardis, the time of the, of the rapture of the great multitude. You see, because when you get to the time of Pergamum, then you see the church age of Constantine. This is the time of the Antichrist coming to power when he has his power and authority to continue for 42 months. This is the point of time where Mark's discourse says that they're to flee into the wilderness 
when uh, when they see something when they see him standing where it ought not. This is the Antichrist, the Constantine type. They're going to flee into the wilderness. Who's fleeing into the wilderness? Well, Smyrna is going to flee into the wilderness with the great multitude that has been building and building in the greatest revival of human history. That's what these guys are doing. That's who these guys are bringing in. And they're putting their necks on the line for it. And they're showing, they're probably going to be taking these people to places of protection within the wilderness during the time of Constantine, during the time of the Antichrist, when he, when he then really kicks in at that 42 months when he gets to continue his power. It's a terrible time of darkness, and it even continues. So this is at about the two and a half year point, but it's going to continue until the end of the sixth year of seals. You got, that's why you see wilderness here, and you still see wilderness here. It's these guys. It's these Luke 24 representation, representatives of Smyrna who are going to work to bring in the church during the time of the greatest revival, during World War III breaking out. But do you know that somebody comes before them? There's still somebody before them too, isn't there? It's the apostles group. You've got the typology of the church of Ephesus in relation to the apostles. He's going to give them the tree of, to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. When does the paradise of God come? At the end of seals. Like when you see the Lord coming at the end of the sixth seal and the world is freaking out. He's coming down on heavenly Mount Zion with paradise. Like he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I return, I will receive you unto myself. So who's going to be here? Well, it's also the kingdom of God, right? They don't get to go into the third heaven portion, but they go into paradise. Because they work during seals. But not only that, the Smyrna group at the end of seals, Smyrna is going to be there too. Smyrna is going to be, they were the ones you're going to see that were, that were under the altar. But when that seals portion is over, they're the ones in the white robes. And you're going to see where their reward comes. There's more to it for them. But even before Smyrna comes, we'll get back to Smyrna. We've got this Ephesus, this apostle portion. Because remember, the apostles, their portion comes before the Luke group. Remember, these were the ones they were breathed on. They were breathed on the Holy Ghost. So what's interesting about these guys, <clears throat> I think they're going to be more like um, the teachers. Yes, they have. They're going to be prophesying. They're going to be healing. They're going to be probably even raising some people from the dead. I mean, they're going to have this ultimate power. Okay, they're going to be doing things greater than the Lord did, he said. That's what these guys are going to be doing. We call this Acts 2.0 in this ministry. These apostles are essentially going to be the, the teachers, the, the ones with the voice making these, making the, the proclamations and people coming and listening. And then it's going to be the Smyrna <clears throat> workers the disciples who are a part of the apostles. And it's these Smyrna workers putting their necks on the line, bringing people in, taking them to, 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 to protected areas, you know, putting their necks on the line for them. While the apostles <clears throat> are, are laying the foundation, if you will, in that spiritual sense, they're laying the foundation for the church during seals. You guys will know what I'm talking about in that, right? These guys that are laying the foundation, okay? You'll remember that the apostles are the ones who, if we go to Revelation chapter 21, 
we see this beautiful thing at the end of the millennial reign, when it's all over, we see that there were 12 gates that represented the 12 tribes. We see that there were 12 foundations that were the 12 apostles. And then we see what? We see that the walls were the measurement of 144 according to the measure of a man that is of the angel <coughs> representing the 144,000. So now who do we see here? We see again a picture of 1 Corinthians 15. The apostles, the represented group as 144, the larger group, and the 12 that are the tribes. So when you're building something, what comes first? The foundation. When the foundation is laid, it's the walls, the 144. When the foundations are laid, when the walls are up on them, then it's the gates, which are the 12 tribes. So what do we have here? We have John's group. We have Mark's group. And we have Matthew's group. You following? You notice who's not in this group, who you would think should be? We're missing somebody, right? Again, just like 1 Corinthians 15 was missing them. But we saw them over in Luke chapter 12. So how come they're not a part of this? How come they're not part of this new Jerusalem at the end of the millennial reign coming down from God? Okay? How come they're missing here? Well, we're going to share, we're going to get into that a little bit more because you're going to see, remember, they're the ones putting their necks on the line. Okay? They're the ones putting their necks on the line. So we're going to see where those guys are. But, and we were just talking about them, <clears throat> but I wanted to jump in quickly with this apostle group because as i said we've got a lot of information and we can lay out a lot of information for two of the four groups it's funny how it works we can lay out a lot of information for the the smyrna workers and we can lay out a lot of information for the 144,000 trumpet workers so the seals workers and trumpet workers we can we can go through many many things to to show what they're doing but when it comes to the 12 apostles, we don't have much. And same, of course, with the 12 tribes because they're the millennial reign. But I mean, for a group that's working during seals, their work is very, it, it, it's, it's not the same. Let's say it that way. It's not the same as the disciples who are working with them during seals. These guys, the apostles, they are busy laying the foundation for which the disciples will bring them all together. You follow? The disciples will, will receive them to Christ and they will be doing this work and putting their necks on the line. But it's the, uh, it's the apostles who are laying the foundation. And what I mean by that is we have this duality going on that we know about in relation to the end of days and the foundation. If you remember this, <clears throat> in first kings chapter six we see this great piece of scripture uh verse 37 and 38 which is the end of days it's the picture of the rebuilding of the temple in the end of days and we're told that it's in the fourth year that the foundation of the house of the lord was laid now this would be the fourth year what well, this would represent the fourth year of seals. So in the fourth year of seals, the foundation is laid. Well, who's the foundation layers? You see, the apostles are the foundation layers. Now, they are laying a spiritual foundation for the church. They're laying a spiritual foundation for what will come after the church, which is the, the, the time of trumpets. Okay? They're laying a spiritual foundation, but not only is a spiritual foundation being laid during seals, 
there's an actual foundation being laid in Jerusalem for them to begin to build the new temple. But as you guys know, <clears throat> once this foundation is laid, it's all that's going to get done during seals. They're not going to start building the temple. They're not going to start doing all that stuff until trumpets begins. And this is, this is why we see here, in the fourth year was the foundation laid. What's awesome about that, as you guys know, when we go to our chapters to year chart, we know Zechariah with his 14 chapters to 14 years, if the foundation is to be laid in the typology while the apostles are doing their work, and there's an actual physical foundation being laid, then we should find something in chapter 4 in the book of Zechariah. And as you guys know, that's exactly what we find in the book of Zechariah, chapter 4. Right? It's, uh, it's about Zerubbabel. And it says, um, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also surely finish it. Okay? Meaning whoever's going to be doing this laying of the foundation is the main guy in this overseeing of the laying of the foundation. When trumpets comes, he's also going to be there and be involved in the physical building, the rebuilding of the city and the temple. I've told you before, I have my suspicions on who Zerubbabel may be, but that's for another video. So what do we see in chapter 4? The foundation of the house of the Lord is laid. And that's exactly <coughs> what 1 Kings chapter 6 told us, that it was the fourth year that the foundation was laid. And so when we come back to this apostle group again, and we go to Revelation chapter 21, we know the ones who represent them, who represent the foundation layers, are the apostles. Now, the apostles aren't building this physical one. They're building the spiritual one, which will eventually be this new Jerusalem at the end, when it's all over, when the millennial reign is over, they're going to be coming down with new Jerusalem for which their efforts, their work, was the foundation being laid. This is, this is their work. This is how we can prove that this portion of time that's about to replay with apostles again is going to take place during the portion of time for seals. But we also know, as I said, that there's this, this worker group of disciples who are going to be under the apostles, if you will, bringing in this great multitude of workers. And what we find out about them as we turn our attention back to them is that they're also a special group of people, of course. We were talking about them here in the, uh, in the churches. And where they are in relation to the churches right here, putting their necks on the line when persecution begins. So if we go back, like I said, to Luke chapter 21, and we look for these guys that some of you shall be put into prison, well, we can clearly see <clears throat> they're this same portion in Luke's discourse. Now, Luke's discourse, as I said, is about the 50-day portion before the 14 years begin. But it doesn't stop there. It's not only that, okay? Then it talks about Jerusalem. When you see Jerusalem surrounded during this time, okay, before the 14 years begin, get out of there. The Lord, as the Son of Man, is going to be warning them to get out, to let them know destruction is coming. But listen to what it says next. Uh, down in verse 24, it says, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So when does this go to? Verse 24 is essentially saying to the end of seals. You see? So the, the, the context of the conversation is about this worker group with them and these things that are going to take place during the 40 days 
and that Jerusalem and those in the land should heed these warnings and flee and get out to places of safety. But then it says, once they do, and once they're being taken by the sword, and some are fleeing, but some are taken captive, some are dying by the sword, and so forth, they're saying Jerusalem is still going to be trodden down to the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled, which is the end of seals. Meaning, these guys who are putting their necks on the line, these guys, some of them being put to death, are the ones that are going to work till the end of seals. Okay? Let me show you who these guys are. Just give me one second. Let me show you who these guys are. We've talked about them many times, of course. You guys all know now that they are the uh, Luke chapter 24 group and the ones being given that commission. But the other place we find them is Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16 is about Priscilla and Aquila. It's Paul says, his helpers in Christ. And it says, who have for my life laid down their own necks unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. And who are these guys? Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Emphatus, who is the first fruits of Christ. Achia unto Christ. So they are re representing the first fruits. Now, if you remember in the last video, this, this is why it's so exciting. This group right here, these guys are the typology, the type and shadow of the church of Smyrna, who are the Luke 24, the two on the road to Emmaus typology, who are going to receive the Holy Ghost at 50 days, but are going to be with the Lord for 40. And then when they receive the Holy Ghost, they will be out there following and with the apostles and putting their necks on the line for the churches of the Gentiles. And we see that they're the first fruits. Okay? The first fruits unto Christ. And when we shared about this in the last video, what was so awesome about this <clears throat> was Exodus. Chapter 34, 22, we've talked about it so many times, but now we understand it. It says that thou shalt observe the Feast of Weeks, June 14th, okay? Of the first fruits of the wheat harvest, the people from the 40 days, which is the 21st into the 22nd of June, at the eighth day, which is the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man, when he meets with this group, these workers that are with him. And then it says, and the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end. We established in the last video that the year's end is the equinox, I'm uh, sorry, is the solstice. That is now the sun at its peak beginning and then going down, right? That is the year's end. So these guys, the first fruits of the wheat harvest, who are the Luke 12 when I return from the wedding, who are the Luke chapter 24, the road to Emmaus, who are the ones in Acts chapter 1 that are following until the, the 40 days were done, who are the ones in Acts chapter 2 receiving the Holy Ghost, who are the ones is Romans chapter 16, those who are the first fruits putting their necks on the line during the time of seals for the Gentiles. When are they going to be chosen? When are they following the Lord when he comes? At the year's end. This group right here, at the Feast of Ingathering, I believe this group here, this Ingathering Feast, is the escape of the bride. And this is where we say, well, why does he say then when he returns from the wedding? That's the question. That's what I was telling you guys at the beginning. That's what I was telling you in the last video. Whether the bride is going to go on day one of the 50 or is the bride going to go on the eighth day? And I said I'm leaning more heavily to the eighth day. But there are clearly things like Luke. Sorry. But there are clearly scriptures like Luke chapter 12. That's telling us um, when he returns from the wedding. 
So there's still there's still some clarity that that we're looking for there. But we now understand this period of time, the observing of it. All right. This is important stuff. So the what we're focusing on here is this first fruits of the wheat harvest group. OK, which means that these workers are being taken from the bride group. They're being to- chosen from amongst them to go out and work. You following now? They are the ones going out to work. When we go now back to Romans chapter 16, and we see them again, there's the Priscilla and Aquila. They're putting their necks on the line for the church of the Gentiles. They're the first fruits unto Christ. When we come to the bottom here, we see this doxology, and it says, you know, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. What is this? This is the escape. This is the escape that has been made manifest, that all nations have been made known of a group gone, made manifest because of their obedience of faith. It was a mystery kept secret since the world began. And look who's part of that group, but left to work as the first fruits. It's it's the Exodus 34, 22 verse. The two groups observed at the year's end. You see, these guys, these guys are very, these guys are really active. Let's just say it that way. How about this? Let's, Let's continue with this theme of the beginning, okay? We're still at the the beginning of the that 40 days and these workers. Now we talked about the apostles in that that beginning of the 50, and that they're going to be the foundation layers, the the spiritual foundation layers during seals. But the real workers that we see a lot of discussion about throughout scripture are these guys here. Okay? It's these guys here. And look at this. When we go to this um to songs song of solomon we're going to see something else really awesome this is a little side note connection to the beginning of everything because just as we were showing exodus 34 22 and how it's connected to the first fruits group and the group that's taken look what happens when we go to song of solomon chapter 3. song of solomon chapter 3 at the end of it listen, listen to what it says uh verse three uh, sorry chapter three verse 11 go forth o ye daughters of zion and behold king solomon with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his espousals you want to know what's wild about that there's a lot of things wild about that but let me show you the day of Israel's espousals is connected to Ephesus and the apostles. Remember, we're saying, does, <coughs> is the bride going on day one? Is, is the bride going on after seven at the eighth day? You see, it's connected to that beginning portion, certainly either day one or by the eighth day, because it's connected to the time of Israel's espousals. Well, we just saw that Israel's espousals and the typology here in the Song of Solomon <coughs> when he received his crown was the time of his, espous- his espousals. And his crown was given to him. In this case, it was given to him by his mother. Well, you want to see something wild about this? If we go to the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 6, and the white horse rider being the son of man coming for 40 days, Look at what we see. And I saw him, behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given to him. If this is when the Son of Man is coming at the beginning, there's only two options. It's either when he comes on day one of the 50, or when he comes on the eighth day of the 50, which is the end of this this portion here, the espousals, 
and the very beginning of the Ephesus time. Because you remember on the eighth day, who does he show himself to first? He comes back to the to the apostles. And then on that same day, then he goes to the Luke group at Smyrna. So again, we're seeing this connection to, to a time of espousals when he's receiving a crown, when a crown was given to him. And you want to see something else cool about all this? Now, there's been so much debate about bow. So when we see the white horse rider and he that sat on him had a bow. Well, when we're reading about the bow, it's we, we get nothing. Even if you go and try to discern what it means and you go to like Blue Letter Bible and you're looking up the word, this is what you get. Same thing you get in the description there. There's nothing. Just a bow, simple as fabric. Now, it says apparently as the simplest fabric. So all we get is bow. Unless you go to 2088 and we say, okay, well, what's 2088? And it's all about bringing forth, bringing forth, bringing forth, bringing forth, bringing forth. It's all about delivery. <coughs> Let me show you. It's all about a time of delivery, okay? And being in travail. We know this connection to Revelation chapter 12, verse 2. But I want to show you something because this word for bow, people have, have called it all sorts of things. But I want to bring your attention to something because this period of time, which relates to Luke's period of time, is before the red horse rider, which is the nation against nation which means this is either him coming on day one of 50 or this is him coming on day on the eighth day of 50. Now, you guys probably have heard this from many people over the years that dreams or visions of the quote unquote rapture or the pre-trip. Now, we have a brother in our ministry who never dreams and just told me about a dream he had uh, uh, earlier in the week, and he was freaking out by it. He's never experienced it, never remembers dreams. The last dream he remembered was like three years ago, and it was just in part. And this one, it, it was freaking him out. He was so excited. But it reminded me of other dreams as well, because he said he saw the stars, the constellations coming down, moving places. And he says, but the sky, everybody was looking up. It was like an explosion of 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 like a um a, of a rainbow it was just filled with colors all beautiful and he says he, it's even hard to explain and he tried to send me pictures of what it looked like but it was the colors of the rainbow swirling around there's a reason why i'm telling you this because it reminded me of others like um carl gallup and many people that have had these rapture visions these pre-trib escape visions and dreams have seen a rainbow, have seen all these colors in the sky swirling around. Well, guess what? We didn't understand what the timing of this was before. We've been trying to understand it for a long time, but now we know more. We've talked about the crown portion before at the time of the espousals, which means it's the beginning of that 50 or the eighth day connected to the bride. But you want to know what else it's connected to? The bow. You see, we're not given a lot of info about the bow. And it can mean a variety of things. But you want to know what time of year this is? What portion of time this is? Brothers and sisters, this is the time of the Feast of Weeks. It is the time frame of the Feast of Weeks. Why does that matter? What is this? What am I getting at? Check this out. If you remember, we shared again in the last video, and we also talked about it from uh, the book of Jubilees, that the very first covenant God made with man was the rainbow. This covenant made with Noah and his family was made at the Feast of Weeks. 
which would mean, <coughs> you see, I do set my bow. When we look at this bow, we know it's a rainbow, but look at what it seems like. It looks like a bow and arrow, a bow for shooting. But we know it was a rainbow. Do you follow what I'm getting at? If you go look at the one in, in Revelation, it's a bow of simplest fabric. We really don't have anything to go on. But we know it's a bow. And we know at the Feast of Weeks, he made a covenant with a bow. And when the Lord is coming at the beginning of the 50, he's coming to meet with the apostles first. And it'll be the beginning of this turbulent chaos. And it'll be a bow and a crown that he was given. When? At the time of his espousals. You following what I'm saying? It's the Feast of Weeks. And look at this. The bow is in the cloud. A cloud. It's the cloud. A cloud. The cloud. It's a singular cloud. Why isn't it plural clouds? Usually when there's a rainbow, it's because there's many clouds and it was raining out, right? This is singular. Do you know why that makes a difference for us? <laughs> it's so awesome. Because in Luke's discourse, this is what we were told. In Luke's discourse, listen to this. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. This, I believe, is the time frame of the Feast of Weeks, brothers and sisters, of 2022. Men's hearts failing them for fear of looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud. Singular. In, Ma in Mark, it's clouds, plural. In Matthew, it's clouds, plural. In Luke, at the time we've been saying is the Feast of Weeks when he's coming, and then to that eighth day, it's related to a cloud. It's related to a bow. It's related to the time of the espousals when he's given a crown. Hello. We know who this white rider is, guys. <clears throat> We've got so much info on him now. It's awesome. So this bow, I believe, is going to be this, the rainbow colors that are going to be just, whoa, that people are going to look up and see. And he's coming at the time of his espousals with the crown that he's been given. And this is where I said earlier that I was going to touch on this with you guys. And that is when that movie that recently came out that, you know, is kind of like he, he builds it to like a, sat, a satire type documentary, if you will, of that movie, Don't Look Up. Well, now, why, why am I bringing this up now when I'm talking about this? Because, again, going to Luke 21, that movie is called Don't Look Up. But where it's relating to is what I was just reading to you about when he comes in a cloud. He'll have that crown at the time of his espousals that was given to him. It'll be a bow and the sky will be filled with, with colors of the rainbow swirling around. And then what does it say? And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. Okay, the movie was called Don't Look Up. Then look up. And lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. This means the time is at hand. Remember, we shared this in the last video. When the fig trees will be ready, that summer is nigh at hand. Okay? This is where we had this revelation of the year's end. So if this is Feast of Weeks when he's coming, and here is the year's end. Okay? The year's end and the beginning now of the new solar cycle. You following? We're going to begin to see things here. This, this right here, right in here, 
is probably when we're going to see this the colors is probably when we see things happening but now here's the thing this said men's hearts failing them for looking after those things which are coming it says then to look up because our time is 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 coming it's at hand and i wanted to share this with you somebody brought it to my attention because i shared in the last video how in the movie they said it was six months and 14 days to when it would happen and the movie came out december 5th well what i was looking at was june being the sixth month and the 14th day that was one way to look at it but if you take the actual date that the movie came out and this is what somebody shared with me and i'm sharing it with you for a reason the date that this movie came out was december 5th and it starts with saying you know based on actual events that might be probably are going to happen okay when you understand the the director the writer and 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 what was taking place and how he does things you know it's very interesting because we're talking about this period of time in june when it had nothing to do with this movie and i'm not saying this movie has anything to do but i'm going to show you something because scripturally i just showed you this connection to this time frame from here to here that's connected to the time of when we were to look up at the time when men's hearts are failing them for looking at what's coming. Well, if you take December 5th, when it came out 2021, and you do six months and 14 days, do you know what it equals? June 19th, June 19th, 2022, right here. Brothers and sisters, do you know why this makes a difference to us? Let me show you. Let me show you how incredible this is. Because remember, this right here is the eighth day. So we're looking at our escape. The bride of Christ somewhere after seven at the eighth day is where I believe it is. Maybe it's at the beginning. I believe it's that after seven, which is the eighth day. Now, here's how I'm going to help solidify that even more. First of all, we just saw in Luke 21, men's hearts failing them. And if men's heart's failing them here, then that means we're going to see because the Son of Man we see coming after we see these things happening. Well, check this out. If June 19th is the six months and 14 days, right smack dab in our beginning of the 50 days to the eighth day, and it's right here, June 19th, do you know what that equals? The movie is exaggerated with this meteor that's going to destroy the whole earth. We know that's not going to happen, but we know that meteors are coming. These things that are coming upon the earth and men's hearts failing them for fear of looking after them. We know it's meteors, but now here's the whole thing. Watch this. Luke chapter 22. You ready for this? You guys will remember, we've talked about it a number of times. Where are you? Oh, too far. Remember this right here. This is after they had their dinner. Okay, the the um, they had their uh, uh, um. Come on now. Let me go back up. They had their Passover dinner. Remember the story of the resurrection. It's all connected to the time of Passover. But remember, it's a typology we've been teaching about what. The resurrection story in the Luke group is him coming for 40 days as the son of man to meet up with that Smyrna group at the eighth day to be with them for 40 and then they'll receive the Holy Ghost later and they'll go do that work during seals. Okay, this is that time when he is coming to meet with them as the typology of the 40 days from Luke chapter 24. So Luke chapter 22, also the typology of the time frame, is talking about what? Something only found in Luke. This is 
when Christ was what? They had their Passover meal. Then that evening, this is maybe what? Three, four hours, give or take, after sunset. They had their meal. It was the 14th of Nisan. Okay, they had their meal. It was evening. He he goes up to pray to the Mount of Olives. And what does he tell them? Listen to this. Starting in verse 39, Luke 22. And he came out and went as, sorry, and he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that you enter not into temptation. And then we read this in verse 41. Very strange. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast or a stone's throw and kneeled down and prayed. This period of time happened right before he was then taken and betrayed by Judas with a kiss. This was the evening of the uh, of Passover. And the story is what? About two and a half days from Christ being taken into the hands of sinful men, crucified, and then resurrected. We know this. We've taught on this. We've spoken on it a number of times. And what do we have? What do we have on this stone's cast? What would it equal? In the typology to Luke 24, as the time when the Lord is coming back at the 40 days, this would be a typology of what? The 19th of June. What? It would be the 19th of June, brothers and sisters. One, two, three. Hello. How about that? The movie that said it would be six months and 14 days equals June 19th, which outside of that movie, we've received the revelation of the end of the Feast of Weeks of the four years plus 70 ends here. And this is the beginning of the 50 days. <coughs> this is the to the third day and the escape of the Bride of Christ, which means we would see it coming in the exact time of Luke chapter 22, my brothers and sisters, when he said he's a stone's throw, a stone's cast away. Why is this important? Why does this matter? Because he's saying that's how far away he is from coming. When we see this stone's throw, we're about to see him. We're about to see him. It's time to look up. You see, it's time to look up because our redemption is at hand. Brothers and sisters, that is the eighth day. Three days from when we'll see the stones throw coming. What? This is why I bring it up. One is because it's pretty exciting, very exciting. And it fits in with the last video when we were talking about it. But I also bring it up because here we are sharing that Luke 24 is when the Lord comes back for the 40 days to begin. And before those 40 days is the typology from his death to his death and resurrection. When what? When he's a stone's throw away. We talked about this, I think, last year, the year before. And many times when we spoke about these things, we were always looking at the time of Passover. <coughs> it's not Passover that we need. It's the typology in the end of days of when these Gospels are speaking to us. And we know these Gospels of Luke, Mark, and Matthew very, very, very well. And so here we are now knowing the season and time of the Feast of Weeks to the beginning of the 50 days. And when he comes for the 40, the three days before is June 19th. Man, that's pretty wild stuff. That's some wild stuff, guys. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. 
So now what about more about these these seals workers, these Priscilla and, Aquil and, Aqu and Aquilas, these first fruit seals workers? Well, we know when they get their power to uh, uh, from the Holy Ghost at the 50th day, we know that they're the ones putting their necks on the line during the time of seals. We see that during the time of Pergamum, it doesn't mean Ephesus is gone. It doesn't mean Smyrna is gone. Ephesus through the apostles are, are leading the way. And Smyrna are the ones really doing the labor of the work, if you will. And they're experiencing persecution right from the start, even during the 40 days. And it's going to continue during the first two and a half years of seals. During the first two and a half years years of seals, as we said, is just the, the beginning of persecutions. It's still, it's going to be bad, but it's still somewhat mild. This is going to be the greatest time of revival that these seals workers are helping to bring in with the help of the apostles leading it. But then it's now the time of the time frame of the church of Pergamum. This is when, as we said earlier, the Antichrist will receive his power to continue 42 months. And this is now when it's time for them to flee into the wilderness. Smyrna will flee into the wilderness and all those that have come to Christ will be fleeing into the wilderness at this time as well. Again, like I said, this is the fleeing that happens in Mark's discourse. All right. They're helping they're helping bring in the mark sleeping church all right this is their time in the wilderness we saw in romans the typology of who they are as the first fruits with priscilla and aquila and they're the ones putting their necks on the line for who the churches of the gentiles for which the gentile age continues until the end of seals Hence, this period of wandering in the wilderness or of hiding out in the wilderness, being protected by the Lord in the wilderness, being fed with manna, being obedient while being protected in that period of time. What ends up happening to these guys? Well, let's go to the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, chapter 6, we see these guys again. Like I said, you really don't see much about the apostles anymore. Unless we go into, like I said, a deeper study and go into the book of Acts and so forth. But this is where we can still get a lot of info about these seals workers, the, the, the disciples of the apostles. And that is when we come to the fifth seal, we see, and when he had opened the fifth seal, this is after the Antichrist had already received his power. Okay, to continue now 42 months. So this has been going on for a little while now, maybe a year, six months, I don't know. But it's been going on for a little bit, and this is what we see. <clears throat> and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge? and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. That's, that's the entirety of the fifth seal. So they're, they're given white robes they're the ones who died for their testimony willingly were killed they put their necks on the line they were beheaded for their testimony in being slain and they're under the altar crying out to the lord lord come on already right come on let's get this done already avenge us and he tells them still a little bit longer because it still seals see it still seals the sixth seal still has to happen so what does he give them? He gives them white robes and he tells them to wait a little longer. When we come now to Revelation chapter seven, the six years of seals are over. He now seals the next group of workers. These workers are the 144,000. Now, 
is are all of the disciple workers did they all die no they weren't all killed okay because they're bringing in the rapture group but there's not enough of them so they need the next worker group to help bring it in the 144,000 as you guys know Luke knows all things in order and when we come to Luke chapter 10 we find out this typology of the 144,000 <laughs> like the 70 priests those that were with um Moses and Aaron this is the typology of them so you have the the seals workers that were crying out unto the Lord of the harvest to help them to help bring laborers to bring in this great harvest this great harvest is the rapture of the great multitude and the 144,000 are going to help the seals workers bring in the great multitude rapture okay this is why when we go back to revelation chapter 7 we see that the 144,000 are sealed before the great multitude rapture so the great multitude rapture the 144,000 are sealed in the seventh year of seals and then when the 144,000 are sealed they are the ones that help the seals workers bring in the great multitude rapture so this is in the seventh year of seals i would say this is maybe i don't know a few months in give or take six months into the seventh year of seals okay so in the seventh year about six months in is when the rapture will happen give or take about that time and what do we see here we don't only see the great multitude rapture it says uh stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes comma and palms in their hands so there were others that were given white robes but there's a specific group that says palms in their hands we've covered this before this palms in their hands is are those that were alive at the time of the rapture of the great multitude this is the harpazo was raptured group are the ones with the palms in their hands the ones with the white robes are the ones who died for christ they were the ones under the altar and had to wait for others who would be like them and then they would be standing before the throne and this is what's happening now now they're standing before the lord so what we see is the end of seals we see the end of the work of the seals workers the end of the priscilla's and aquila's the end of the the two to emmaus you see it's two it's two these these two who represent two sets of twelve thousand, their time has come to an end the great uh, uh, the 144 help bring them in and then those who are dead along with those who are alive are now standing before the lord where in paradise because if you remember at the end of the sixth seal we see everybody crying out and saying hide us from the one uh hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of the, of his wrath is at hand this is when he comes on heavenly mount zion with paradise remember they were all promised the lord said when i return i'll receive you unto myself that where i am there you may be also and he said that he went to build them all he, there's a mansion for everybody this is the great rapture the multitude of the of the of the rapture the great multitude rapture i should say that everybody talks about okay but they mix it with the pre-trib one the pre-trib one is a smaller group of people all right and so what we're seeing now is the end of seals we're now seeing the end of the seals workers and we see the ones who have put their necks on the line now if you remember this obviously you'll remember it but when we went to revelation chapter 21 and we saw when new jerusalem was coming down at the end of the millennial reign we saw that it had 12 foundations right 
um, uh, uh, 144,000 for the walls, and it had the gates that represented the tribes. But what we don't have is any represented reward that related to those workers of seals. What about their reward? What what is what is special for them that they were so willing to put their necks on the line? It's I'm not saying they do it because of a a reward. I'm not doing this because of a reward. I don't know why I can't say it. My my throat's getting raspy. <laughs> but it's not because of reward. It's because we're obedient. We're just diligently loving and seeking the Lord and trying to live our lives with him, with us in him and him in us. And, you know, not just in reading and in understanding, but in taking it to the world in loving others in helping others out in in giving them a, a word, a pat on the back, lift them up, do what we can do. Right. Let them see Christ in us as we teach them about Christ coming. You see. So what do we, what's missing here? Well, it's missing this group that willingly put their necks on the line for the Lord, who followed him for 40 days, received instruction, received the Holy Ghost. Many of them ended up dying. And so what about them? I'll show you where they are. They're at the beginning of the millennial reign. Watch this. Here comes, this is the end now of trumpets, right? The end of trumpets, Satan is cast, he's bound, he's put into the bottomless pit. And a thousand years is about to begin. And what happens? Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw the thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. Both of them mean on, by the way. Um, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead, meaning everybody else that died during tribulation, and before tribulation, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Meaning there ain't no resurrection of people from the tribulation time, certainly, that are going to be resurrected until the, the end of the millennial reign, when it's all over, then everybody's resurrected. Prior to that, for the millennial reign, the only ones resurrected are those who put their necks on the line during seals. They're going to live, rule, and reign. They Sorry, lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And it says what? <coughs> but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him 1,000 years. When you go back to Smyrna, you understand exactly who these people are. Again, we know exactly who they are. They were the disciples from 40 days working through seals, bringing about the, the greatest revival in history with the apostles at their lead. And what ends up happening? They end up putting their necks on the line and die. So when we come to Smyrna again in the church of Smyrna and we read what it says, listen to verse 11, the last verse of it. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. That's pretty clear, isn't it? Those who will not be hurt of the second death are probably the same ones that it said, on such the second death has no power. 
So in Revelation chapter 21, we see the apostles from 1 Corinthians 15. We see the 144 representation of the walls that were the larger number. And then we see the other 12, which are represented of the 12 tribes, which are the gates. But like I said, there was this missing fourth group, which were with the apostles during the time of seals. So there must have been obviously something for them. And there is. It's the millennial reign and reigning with Christ for that time. That is awesome. This is their reward, guys. <laughs> They're going to be raised from the dead. They're going to be raised from the dead and reign with Christ for a thousand years. What? That's pretty crazy. That is pretty awesome, isn't it? Well, now don't forget, once the seals portion is over, okay? The seals, here's the wilderness they were living in. When seals comes to an end, it's the, it was the time that represented the, the reformation of the church. It's the time of Israel's kings because it's the time when the Son of Man will have returned. He's now on Mount Zion, right? Let's go look at this. He's now going to be on Mount Zion. We saw him on, uh, uh, um, we saw the next group of workers in Revelation chapter 7. We see when they get sealed. The 144,000 are being sealed here. And they're being sealed, as we said, before the rapture because they're going to help bring them in. But then when it's over and they brought them in and they're now standing before the Lord, here they are. Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount, Z uh, on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Okay? Um, and they sung a new song, as it were, before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000, which were redeemed from among from the earth. Okay? And it goes on to say that they were redeemed from uh, uh, from people on the earth, all right? <clears throat> from women. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men. And look at this. Being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. So now we've got another first fruits. They were redeemed from among men, and they helped bring in the 144 already. I mean, they helped bring in the, the rapture already. This is why, and Mount Zion having come down, these guys are on Mount Zion. This is why they come from among men, and only men can sing. They're the only men on earth that can sing this song because they were from men on the earth. You see, they were redeemed from the earth. So do you remember <coughs> that the seals workers, the first first fruits who put their necks on the line, they were taken from among the, 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 the pre-trib escape group of the bride. And they put their necks on the line and they worked during the time of seals as we went through. And now we have the 144 which were redeemed from the earth, taken from among men. So what group are these guys taken from? They're being taken from among the rapture group. These are a chosen group from among the rapture being set aside now for this work. And you want to see how we can show this? It's another group. And don't forget, these are also now called the first fruits unto God. So who is this group now? Who is this 144 represent? Well, we've shared earlier that the end of Luke is a group chosen to work seals, which is Mark's group. So if we go to the end of Mark, we're going to find a group in Mark that's chosen to work the trumpets portion of time. And that's this group right here. Remember that group that he unbraided on? He doesn't sit down and meet and sit down and eat. He doesn't serve them. This is what Luke chapter uh, 12 said when he comes the second time. This is it right here. 
this is them right here. They represent, this is the typology here of the 144,000 when he comes at the end of seals. We shared how he helps, they help bring in the rapture group. Then we see that they're going to go out during the first half of trumpets. And they're going to be casting demons and devils out. And they're going to be so excited about it. Because the first half of trumpets, the Lord is there on Mount Zion. Everything in Jerusalem now is, is about to be rebuilt on the foundation that was laid during seals. But when mid-trumpets comes and Messiah is cut off, then they're given power. Uh, um, it says, in my name shall cast out devils. Then they're given power over serpents and drinking any deadly thing. Because that's when the pit is going to be opened up. Okay? Remember when we were in Luke chapter 10? And we said, here's that representation. Here's that representation when they come in to help bring in the rapture group. Well, now they've helped bring in the rapture group. And now it's the beginning of trumpets. And what are they to do? They're to go out into the cities. <coughs> They're to cast out demons and heal the sick and do all these things. And so they go and do all these things. And then look what happens. They return to Jesus. Okay, this is a, a, a the typology of the 144 returning to Jesus at mid-trumpets. And it says, And I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You see? This is them now being given power at mid-trumpets. This is at the end of seals to the beginning of trumpets. They help bring everybody in. Okay. Then we see them there at uh, Revelation chapter 14. It's like, it's like it's the end of that seventh year of seals. Okay. It's like it's chapter 14 of Revelation is right here. Okay. It's not like it is right here. Okay. But it's as if it's, it's the tail end of it. Now they're standing on Mount Zion. And they're being prepared to be sent out during the time of trumpets. And watch what happens now. We see a little bit of what these guys do for work in Luke 10. And it's that they're, they're excited going out during the first half. You got to remember, the Lord has returned on Mount Zion. Is the whole world going to see him? No. The answer is found in Mark chapter... Uh, in Mark's discourse, he's going to be in the clouds. The world is going to see this coming. And they're going to be freaking out, but they're not going to actually see him. It's going to be whatever this Mount Zion is going to be looking like, and it's going to be established somewhere over Jerusalem when Jerusalem is now going to start to get rebuilt. So when we see things like this, I'll show you where it is. It's what we talked about many times with Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, we saw where we are at the Feast of Weeks this year. There's the 70 weeks. You have the 50 days, and then you have seven years passing. These are the seven years of seals, where the seals workers and all that stuff took place. Once this time of seals are over, it's the seven years of trumpets. And what happens during the seven years of trumpets? About the first half of it, is when they're going to be rebuilding the city and the streets. And look at this. The wall. Even in troublous times. Why troublous times? Because it's still going to be trumpets. The first four trumpets are happening around the world. But what's being built? The wall. What does the wall represent? The time of the 144,000. Now, just like the apostles... They weren't the ones literally building the foundations. And it's like these, the, the, the 144,000s. I don't think they're the ones literally building the foundation. They're the ones building the spiritual walls, I should say. They're the ones now building the spiritual walls on what the apostles built of the spiritual foundation. But at the same time, the city is being rebuilt. The walls and the temple is being rebuilt on the foundation that was laid during seals. 
and that's why we see the about three and a half years they're going to re be rebuilding everything <clears throat> and what do we know about this time well it would be the beginning of trumpets so if we go to zechariah chapter 8 and look at the beginning of trumpets look at what else we see we know that just like here seven weeks or seven years have passed and so the beginning of the eighth year is the beginning of trumpets and look at what we read starting in verse 2 of zechariah 8 thus saith the lord of hosts i was jealous for zion with a great jealousy and i was jealous for her with a great fury thus saith the lord i am returned unto zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. He is returned on Mount Zion, not feet down on the Mount of Olives, but in the clouds on Mount Zion above Jerusalem. It's going to be protected and surrounded. Listen to what it says. Starting in verse eight, and I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Remember, the rapture came back, right? Judah's being brought back. They were out in the, they were, they were scattered for seven years, right? Judah's being brought back. And it says, in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Verse 9, thus saith the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. Ye that hear in these days the words by the mouth of the prophets, which were laid in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. Well, we know this was built in the fourth year of seals. So while the apostles were, were building a spiritual foundation and, and the rapture group and all this group was coming in, <clears throat> there was the physical being built as well. Then it says, this is an awesome verse here in verse 10. For before these days, there was no man for hire, nor, um, nor any hire for beast, neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For I set all men, every one against his neighbor. What's that, brothers and sisters? Tribulation. For seven years, it was tribulation of seals. So there was no man for hire. There was nobody that could have been rebuilding everything. It was only the foundation that was laid during seals, which was the responsibility, quote unquote, during the time of the apostles. But now, the rebuilding is taking place. You following? Who is responsible? Who is who is over the walls? Who is who is represented by the walls that are being rebuilt? As we saw in Daniel 9, <clears throat> when the seven years were over, when the seven years, seven weeks as years are over, they're going to rebuild the street and the wall, even in troublous times, and the sanctuary is being built that we read, uh, the temple is being built as we read in Zechariah chapter eight. What's the key? The wall. Now it's the time of the wall being built. If we go back into Revelation 21, just quickly, because we covered it, what do we see about this time that relates to the wall? The measure of the wall thereof, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. 144 based on the wall. These are the trumpets workers. You see what's happening? These are got the guys working trumpets. What else do we see about them? Let's go to Revelation. Whoops. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 3. You see, when we go to Revelation chapter 3, if we look at the church ages, we see Philadelphia. Okay? Philadelphia is going to get some extra power because remember, they're here during the first half of trumpets when things are bad, but it's a joyous time because the Lord is, is over Zion. It's being rebuilt. 
He makes he makes a covenant with the nations. This is what's happening. And these guys are sent out during this time. And then we know at mid trumpets, you're going to see that's where the cutoff happens. We see it in Daniel when Messiah is going to be cut off. So this is why we read here in the Church of Philadelphia. These things say he that is holy is true. He that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works, and behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast little strength, and hast kept my word, <coughs> and hast not denied my name. Um, behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Now listen to this. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now, we've been taught this wrong because we've been taught from the Gospel of Matthew all of our lives. Now you're understanding now this time frame and this and this worker group that this 144 relates to as the Church of Philadelphia, which is during the seven years of trumpets. What this is telling them here is that he's going to keep a watchful eye on them during the time of this crazy period that's about to befall the whole earth. What is this crazy period that's about to happen? Well, of course, it's when Satan's about to be cast down. Not at the beginning of trumpets, but at mid-trumpets. After the city, the streets, the wall has been rebuilt, and the temple has been rebuilt. And you say, well, what do you mean the temple has been rebuilt? Well, let's come back to this. It's connected to it. But let's go back to 1 Kings chapter 6 and look at what we read. In the fourth year was the foundation laid. We covered that. And in the eleventh year, in the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, was the house finished. In total, it says it was seven years in building it. But it was the eleventh year that it was finished being built. Well, guess what? We go to the eleventh year. That's mid-trumpets. So you've got one, two, three and a half years approximately into trumpets when now the foundation was laid in the fourth year. Then everything comes to a hold because of the events that take place to the end of seals. Then the Lord comes at the beginning. He comes at the end of actually the end of the sixth year on Mount Zion. We know all those things that happen. The 144 seal, the rapture of the great multitude, the seventh seal. and then. There he is at the beginning on Mount Zion, and he's telling them, let their hands be strong because now they're going to start rebuilding on the foundation that was already laid. So by the time it's done, it'll be three and a half years into trumpets, but from the fourth year of seals, it'll be what? Seven years in building. So by mid trumpets in the 11th year, which is 10 and a half. So from this half point to this half point, it'll be seven years. And what? The foundation in the fourth, in the 11th year, the house and everything is done. And the total was seven years. It's the same thing that Daniel's saying. When we come over here to Daniel chapter nine, I know you guys know this one well. This is what we were talking about. Seven years and then about three and a half years, the streets, the wall, okay, the city, the, the temple is being rebuilt, and then Messiah is cut off. Why? Because Satan has been cast down. And so when Satan is cast down, the 144,000, remember, they need the additional power. <clears throat> remember Luke chapter 10 says when they come back to him, he gave them power. He saw Satan be cast down. So he gives them additional power so that they could tread on serpents and scorpions and all that and not be hurt, remember? Well, when we come back to the understanding, 
of uh, uh, um, the Church of Philadelphia. And it says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which will come upon the whole world. He didn't say he would remove you from it. He's talking to the 144,000 who are workers during it. He's not saying he's going to take you out. He's saying he's going to protect you against it. To guard from injury or loss. Keeping an eye upon. See, he's going to watch over them. He's going to prevent them from injury and from loss. Which we know from Luke 10, he gave them power to endure and to flee from these things and to be protected from these things. <coughs> because this is the time when the whole world is going to freak out. We all know it. Revelation chapter 12. See, from Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, 2, until verse the end of verse 5 is the end of seals. This is the end of seals. There's the caught up. There's the rapture. Then chapter verse 6 is the first half of trumpets. You see this 1260 days. That 1260 days, the first half of trumpets, is how long this battle in heaven is going to take with Michael and his angels and the dragon and his angels. When he loses and he's cast down to the earth, listen to what it says. Revelation 12, verse 9. And the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And then they all start rejoicing. Listen to what it says in heaven. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. Let's skip down to verse 12. Listen to this. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time. What are they saying? Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. What did Revelation 3 say of this time when he's going to keep a watchful eye and he's given them this additional power? He says he's going to keep a watch over them during this hour of temptation, this hour of experiencing of evil which shall come upon the whole world to try them to test them what is this point here it is mid trumpets this is the point when everything has been rebuilt in jerusalem and then satan is cast down messiah is cut off the 144 the church of philadelphia has been given the additional power to to stand up against them to flee and to survive, okay, and to do the works that they need to do. This is the Matthew time of fleeing. This is when those who are in Jerusalem, this is when they will flee. They will fly on the wings of an eagle. You see, not the 144, but those to be protected during the second half of trumpets. This is why when we go to Revelation chapter 12, and we go to verse 14. So after this woe, 13, we come to 14. It says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half. So it's one plus two plus a half. This is the three and a half years of trumpets that remain. But as we've said before, Satan's time is only two and a half of these three and a half years as we read in daniel because the lord returns at the end of the six years of trumpets and destroys all those who came against and binds up satan so these guys that are taken into the wilderness are the ones that were brought back into the land and it was the judah portion the house of judah and they're flying on the wings of the eagle into the place of protection until the total of the 14 years is over and so what's happening during this time is the 144,000 are still here. 
You see, you go to verse 15 and it says, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. And the woman, uh, after the woman, that she might be caused to be carried away of the flood, and the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened up her mouth, of course, and swallowed the water that was coming cast out from the mouth of the dragon, which, of course, we know is this protection that they have being taken now into the wilderness. But look at what verse 17 says. And the dragon was wroth, so still about that time of mid-trumpets now. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. These are the 144,000. So now he's going to make war with them, right? And it represents also, I believe, a connection to the two witnesses. So when he makes war with them, when we go, I think, to Revelation 11, we read about it with the two witnesses. Uh, is it 11? Yeah, verse 7 in, in Revelation 11. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit, okay, mid trumpets, when Satan is cast down, the pit is going to be opened, shall make war against them, shall overcome and kill them. Their body shall lie in the streets and so forth, right, for three and a half days. When their bodies rise at the end of three and a half days, it's the end of the sixth trumpet. It's the end of the six years of trumpets. Which means this war against them lasted for two and a half years. So this battle that's going to take place against the two witnesses and the, the 144 that are a part of it, just like it said, it's going to turn to the remnant of her. And he's going to make war with them. This war is the two and a half years while Satan is here. But we know that this war comes to an end. But we know it doesn't just like, it's not like a, a one day or one week war. It's going to be two and a half years of battling and going after them. When we go to Revelation, uh, when we go to Daniel chapter 9 again. <coughs> in fact, let's go to Revelation uh, Daniel 12, I mean. Go to Daniel 12 first. And this is where we read that, you know, how long is this going to last? How long is this craziness going to go on? And they're told for a time, times and a half. It's one, there's no and, so it's not plus. So it's one, two, plus a half. So it's a two and a half year period of time when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. All these things shall be finished. Which means at the end of the sixth year of trumpets, which is the 13th year of seals and trumpets total. And look at what we read. It's what we read here. Remember the, the city and the streets and the temple were being rebuilt, right? It represented the time of the 144,000, which proves that their time as the wall is represented during the time of trumpets. And when this time of Messiah being cut off, at mid trumpets, it talks about the prince that shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. That's the flood going after them from Daniel chapter 12. But then it says, and unto the end of the war, meaning there's a war that took place and it's going to end. Well, look at this. When it ends, it turns out there's one year left. Because it's like we said, it's seven years. Three and a half years of rebuilding approximately. Two and a half years of this war and when Satan was cast down and the pit opened and all of that. And then when the sixth year of trumpets is over, the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. And he confirms the covenant that he made with all nations at the beginning of trumpets. And he's going to destroy all those for the abominations that they made in the temple and everything else and for coming after Jerusalem <coughs> and his people. When we go back to Zechariah, we remember in Zechariah chapter 8 that the Lord has returned on Mount Zion. They're going to build now everything on top of the foundation. Okay, the, They're going to rebuild the temple and the city and the streets. They couldn't do it because for seven years it was tribulation of seals. And then when we go to 
three and a half years later, Zechariah chapter 11, we see this is where Satan is cast down. It says Messiah has to break his covenant. Okay. He breaks it in one day. Where is it? Right here. That I may break my covenant, which I made with all people. He has to break it because Satan's been cast down. Okay. And then we see this price weighted for 30 pieces of silver. When we say that it's connected now to the to the Mark group, remember this group working during this time are those from the end of Mark. They were taken from among men of the rapture group, and they're taken at the end of Mark, meaning the end of seals for that rapture from that rapture group, and they're working during trumpets. They're working during the Matthew time, having been taken from the Mark group. Just like the Luke group, there was a group taken to work the Mark group. So now the Mark group that's working the Matthew group, if you remember in Matthew, we have the story with Judas who ended up, uh, verse chapter 26, who were told covenanted with the enemy for 30 pieces of silver. So here we have the enemy covenanting for 30 pieces of silver at a time in Zechariah 11 of mid-trumpets, at a time of Daniel chapter 9 at mid-trumpets when Messiah is going to be cut off. And it was for the same typology there in Zechariah for those 30 pieces of silver. So the reason it's in Matthew is because it's during the portion of time of Judah, but it's the workers from Mark that are one, the ones working during this time. You see, and they, who are they? <clears throat> Again, these guys, not the 30 pieces, but the guys working Matthew are the ones that when Jesus said, when I come the second time, and we saw what their, what their reward was. Their reward was that at the end of the millennial reign, we could see that what they were building on were the spiritual walls during the time that the physical wall was being rebuilt. You see how crazy awesome this is? And then what? Well, remember we said, um, Remember we said that uh, the 144,000 in Revelation chapter 14, right? That they were also the first fruits. So that would mean there has to be a second first fruits. Well, if Romans was the first one representing the group from Luke that was working Mark's time, then 1 Corinthians, the end of 1 Corinthians, look at what we find. It's talking about now concerning the collection of the saints. Now, what was taking place was talking about this collection of money and so forth. But what we're talking about is the actual collecting of the saints. And it's talking about a group that's going to be chosen based on the letters about these people. And listen to what we read. Uh, verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 3 and 4. And when I come, whomsoever you shall approve by your letters... Them will I send to bring you liberty unto Jerusalem. And if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Who are these guys? Check this out. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achia. This isn't the same first fruits as Romans 16. They were the first fruits of Ephesus, I think it was. And these are the first fruits of Stephanos. They have crowns, right? Stephanos, they're going to be crowned. We go to Revelation chapter 3. Not only are they the first fruits, just like we read in Revelation chapter 14 about the 144. But when you go to the church of Philadelphia, verse 11 says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. You following? This is awesome stuff. 
This is their direct connection. They are the first fruits from 1 Corinthians 16, who are the ones chosen from among men by the typology of the letters written to approve of them, who are going to be the first fruits workers at this time of trumpets. It's awesome. It's so amazing. But now, finally, we get to the last group. And what's the last group? Well, again, in Luke chapter in Luke chapter 12, we saw that there was a third group. And this third group was also the same representation in 1 Corinthians 15 that was the first group that met with the Lord that was the 12. Why are they called the 12? Well, because the other ones are called the apostles. And this 12, people always confuse it with being the apostles, but it's not. It relates to the 12 tribes. And when is this going to relate to? Well, if the foundation has been laid, the walls and the temple and everything have been rebuilt, the enemy has come, he's been cast down, Satan's time has been cast down, the pit was opened, and now what? Now the Lord is returning feet down on the Mount of Olives, and who is he going to meet with? He's going to then be meeting after this destruction of all the enemy and binding up Satan for a thousand years. He's meeting with the 12 what? With the heads of the 12 tribes. And that's why in Matthew's discourse, you see towards the end of Matthew's discourse when the Lord's coming, listen to what we read. See, after the abomination of desolation, when Satan has been cast down, because he went into the temple declaring himself God. Look at what we read. Here comes the Son of Man immediately after the tribulation of those days. Look at what happens. Verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn when they see the Son of Man coming. It's about the tribes now, you see? You don't read tribes in Luke. You don't read tribes in Mark, neither of them in discourse. It's about the tribes. When we go to the end of Matthew, and we know that the resurrection story was when he comes for 40 days, is when he comes at the end of the six years of seals, and in Matthew's is when he comes at the end of the sixth trumpet. Look at what we read. <clears throat> we read that there was a great earthquake. Okay, that's like what you read at the end of the sixth uh, trumpet. And then it says, and his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. Because when Christ returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, he's going to be as lightning from one end unto the other. Okay, and look at what he says to this group. When he returns, they meet him unto the mountain where they were appointed and he tells them, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye and teach all nations. Now this group isn't going to preach anymore. Why? Because the whole world will have seen him coming. All the earth will know that the Lord has returned. And all power has now been given to him in heaven and on earth. Satan is now bound. There's no need to preach anymore. They're to go teach all nations and they're going to baptize them in the name of the father the son and of the holy ghost you see that's why we say this baptism isn't for us we are in the period of time where we're still to be baptized as acts chapter 2 verse 38 so this is the end of trumpets okay the end of the six years in that seventh year in that nth year of trumpets they're to go out and teach and it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. He's now here on the earth with them until the end of the world. And what was their commission? They're to go out and teach all nations, 
until the end of the world. Of course, the end of the world is the millennial reign. So who do these guys represent? Well, it gets pretty obvious now, doesn't it? Uh, in Revelation chapter 21, we now know who the gates are represented by when the millennial reign is over and the earth is destroyed that we're in now and a new heaven and a new earth descend, new Jerusalem is coming down and the 12 gates are the representation of the 12 tribes. If we go to Zechariah 14, <clears throat> we see when the Lord returns in that 14th year at the beginning, the end of the 13th, start of the 14th, same thing. He returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. And he's going to what? Fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle because he fought at the end of the six years of seals. Now he's going to fight in that final year of trumpets. When he steps down, feet down on the Mount of Olives, binds Satan and destroys all those who came against Jerusalem. And when these guys are gone out to teach, after all flesh is destroyed that came against them, they're what? They go to teach all nations. They're to teach them that they're to come up at the Feast of Tabernacles, that they're, come out, they're, they're to come and to worship the Lord at specific times of year. <clears throat> well, how are they going to get in to Jerusalem? How are they going to get into that period of time? Well, remember, they represent the gates. This is New Jerusalem coming down at the end. But spiritually, remember, during seals, the apostles were laying the foundation while an actual foundation was being laid. During trumpets, the 144 were working during the time when the wall was being rebuilt and the temple and the streets and so forth. When it's over and the Lord returns feet down and he's destroyed all those who came against, there's going to be the 12 tribes and the heads of the tribes and those responsible for going to tell all the nations how to observe the things of the Lord, to go and teach them the things of the Lord during the millennial reign. And they will come in through the gates. And that's why when it's all over, these guys, they're, the reward of it all is also being part of this bride being New Jerusalem coming down from heaven, represented by all three of them. <clears throat> and the disciples who worked during seals, their reward is the reigning with him during the thousand years while the tribes are out gathering the people and teaching them the ways when to come in to worship the Lord. Isn't that freaking awesome come on this stuff is gangbusters to understand i mean to think i mean i told you right we're on, we're over two and a half hours i could have easily done another two and a half hours breaking this stuff all down for you guys it's incredible look at this let's finish it up with we did romans last chapter for the first group we did first corinthians last chapter for the second group that would mean if we go to the last chapter potentially of second corinthians we should see the third time when he's coming well let's have a look this is the third time i am coming to you <laughs> come on you think i make this stuff up it's always in order guys it is always 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 in order it is so awesome and listen to what he says Finally, brethren, farewell, be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Remember, because he's now actually with them. This is now talking about he has come down. It's at the end. It's the 14th year. It's all come to an end. And now when this 14th year is over, remember all those from Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, they were taken until the 
end of the 14 years. And so they were taken on the wings of eagles when it's all done, the two and a half years of Satan, the Lord destroying all those who came against, and now the tribes are going to be sent during the millennial reign. Well, before they're all sent out, and the 14 years comes to an end, it will be the final jubilee. You know what happens in this final jubilee? Exactly as the chapters to years tell us. Check this out. Let's end this with the workers are now all done. Everything's done for them. The tribulation has come to an end, and it means what? It means the promised millennial reign is now beginning. And when it begins, all of the tribes will what? Receive their own land. And look at what we read. Now, these are the names of the tribes. What? Ezekiel chapter 48 in the chapter to year representation is at the Jubilee. When they're all receiving their own land, it's telling them from border to border to border for all the tribes, where they're going to be, what they get. It's perfect. What about going to Psalms? Go to Psalms 33 or, or Psalms 33 or 133, both of them. Because as you guys know, <clears throat> there's two formats of Psalms that play out in chapters to years. And look at what 33 says. Uh, Rejoice in the Lord. Uh, what is it? No, it's skillful. Let all the earth. Psalms 33, verse 8, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. The whole world ain't standing in awe of the Lord right now, are they? They will when he's here, feet down on the Mount of Olives. You get it? They will all know and stand in awe. What if we go to Psalms 133? It's even better. Check this out. Because it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You see that? The brethren are not dwelling together in unity. This will be when the brethren, when the tribes are now in their land, all having received their land and their promised millennial reign of peace, and they will be dwelling together in unity. The final verse, 133 verse 3, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descendeth upon the mountains of Zion, for the Lord hath commanded the blessings, even life, forevermore. Brothers and sisters, I pray this blesses you. I pray that it's reached you. I know it is a lot to take in, but I pray if you need to, take it in. Take, rewatch it. Take some time and watch portions study it because if you feel especially that the lord is speaking to you then understand these things there is some serious serious times ahead for a number of workers around the world but the glory and the 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 blessing of being able to do these things for the lord and his name to bring in this great multitude to to put our necks on the line if need be. It's one thing to say it in words. It's another to actually do it. But it's not going to be a mystery. I want you guys to know that. You're either going to be taken in the escape or he will show himself to you and you will be chosen as this group of disciples to be with the Lord for 40 days. You will receive on the 50th day the what we call Acts 2.0, this anointing of the Holy Ghost, and it won't be a mystery. You will know who you are at that point. You will know the season and time that you're in at that point. You will know that you've received the Holy Ghost at that point. So don't go, don't go selling your house and all of your goods. Don't go quitting your job. I've never told anybody to quit their job. I've never told anybody to go and sell everything they have. It hasn't begun yet. And when the time comes, you will know if you're part of this ministry, you will know in either case, whether you're taken in the escape, of course, whether 
you're a, a servant and working for the Lord during the 40 and seals, whether you're an apostle, okay, or whether you're left behind, whether maybe the love of the Lord wasn't in you. I would hate that to be anybody here in this ministry. But remember, guys, we are still living in this world. We're still a part of this world as we watch diligently seeking the Lord. But we still have families. We still have to take care of our families. We still have to do the things that are necessary in life. But as we do them, we give thanks to the Lord. We take time in moments in our day and remember him. Guys, you can't all be me. You know, and I forget that sometimes. And people say, oh, man, if I could study as much as Alan and learn. Not everybody's going to be like that. This is my job. This is why we rely on help from you guys as well. You see, because this is my job. But many of you have your own jobs. You have your own work. You have your families that need to be taken care of. You can't just throw those things aside and just say, I'm going to watch and wait for the Lord. That is not what he wants you to do. Sitting around and just saying, I'm going to wait for the Lord. Oh, I'm learning all this stuff and I'm going to wait. No. If the Lord has called you and set you aside for a specific thing, that's one thing. But if you just think and you just want to know because the time is at hand, that's another. It doesn't mean that you can't be taking time daily. It doesn't mean you can't be watching these teachings and studying them and learning them and, and draw closer to the Lord in the revelation of his understanding. But it doesn't mean you abandon everything else in your life. That's good. You abandon the things that are bad, those things that still need to be weeded out. But don't put everything else on hold. And I know that's not always an easy thing to do. But I mean, especially when it comes to family and to work, there's still things that need to be done. You still have a job to do with your work because you may impact others. You'll reach others for the Lord more than you will just sitting at home. Okay? So guys, please take this to heart. The time is close. Five months. We're what, the 15th? It's five months to June 15th. It's not that long. I know we will probably experience things along the way still. It will get much harder for some in certain parts of the world. All right? But we will continue to do our part. And we will do our best to continue to bless you. And we will help in ways where we can help. And we will come together. And that's why for everybody that's new and you've taken your time to come right to the end. That's why if you come to ministryrevealed.com, you can go to what we call the forum. You can join the forum in there. It'll take you a few seconds to sign up. We've got over 900 people in there. And we're sharing. We're uplifting each other. We're praying for each other. We're, we're sharing news, uh, uh, revelation, and digging into Scripture. All sorts of things are happening in there. So with that, again, I pray this blesses you. I know it was a big one, but you're lucky because it could have been twice as long. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless your families. We appreciate everything. We appreciate your prayers. We appreciate your intercessions, and we appreciate your support. We love you. God bless you. God bless your families. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.